We've spent 10 years together in Smite, but now it's time for something new, something more beautiful than ever before, something with more impact, more strategy, and more creativity, something we've all been dreaming about for a long, long time. Introducing World Premiere. I woke up this morning, woke up this morning yeah, yeah. feeling reborn and it's like a new dawn. Yeah. The misery's off, the energy's on, and I'm feeling strong. I'm feeling strong. Yeah, something's evolving. If I'm being honest, nothing can stop me. I'm feeling godly. What's too worthy, you ask? This isn't just a slightly larger than normal season. It's not a balanced pass that we're calling a sequel. Smite 2 is the next generation of cross-platform third-person MOBA. This is a true sequel to Smite, fully modernized and rebuilt from the ground up in Unreal Engine 5. That's a two-generation leap over Smite's Unreal 3, which first released back in 2006. We've got a lot to talk about today, so let's get started. Smite 2 has all the things you already love about Smite, and so much more. It's got the depth of strategy and tactics that you can only find in a three-lane MOBA. Competition is core to our DNA, and rest assured that Smite 2 is a competitive game that rewards your time and your skill. But unlike those other MOBAs, Smite 2 has amazing third-person combat. Whether you're coming from MOBAs, shooters, action games, or MMOs, you'll feel instantly at home. And of course, Smite 2 feels great on keyboard and mouse, or on controller. Naturally, Smite 2 has a diverse roster of gods representing mythological pantheons from around the world, all updated for UE5. Some, like Loki, stay true to the god you love in Smite 1. They just look a lot better. Others, like Anubis, have incredible new animations and godly effects, flexing the power of UE5. Some are reimagined with new abilities. That's right, Ymir's wall now knocks up enemies, and he can use it to rocket jump, at least as much as a frost giant can jump and some have an all-new look that stays true to their Smite 1 legacy while updating it for a new era. Here's an early look at Smite 2's Neath, who feels much more mythologically appropriate than before. And of course, Smite 2 has all-new gods. Introducing Hikati, whose flowing robes and otherworldly effects are only possible in UE5. Hikati, the Greek goddess of sorcery, has been the single most community-requested god for Smite. Players have felt her impact in Smite for years through the item Ring of Hikati, but now they will finally be able to play as the legendary witch herself. Hikati brings an elegant playstyle to Smite 2 with her ranged magical abilities. Her magic allows her to reach through dimensions and even travel within the liminal space itself. Hecate's flames can guide the way or her sorcery can bring gods to a halt. The choice is yours. Hecate is the first of five all new gods coming to Smite 2 before launch, but we can't give everything away just yet. Smite 2 is more than just Smite. Smite 2 is our chance to go back take all the learnings from 10 years of making Smite into one of the most successful multiplayer games of all time, and do it all strictly better. Not just better in some ways and worse than others, but undeniably better. There are improvements you'll see straight away. Smite 2 leverages things like dynamic lighting, using physically based rendering, cloth simulation, higher polygon counts, and a whole slew of other features that we weren't able to take advantage of in Smite. Our goal has been to enhance the visuals in all areas while preserving the feel of Smite that our players love. We've made improvements to things like animation, effects, environment art, but we're just as proud of the hundreds of little touches. We focused on things that you'll appreciate even if you don't consciously notice them. Smite 2 should just feel better. For example, something as simple as a jump animation is at a major overhaul, allowing for a smoother flow while adding context and impact. Ability effects are all new, taking full advantage of Niagara. 
Watch how Anher's pillar dissolves into sand, how Chalk's rain wets the ground, and how Ymir's wall freezes the nearby environment. These effects will increase your immersion in the world and your sense of godly power. We looked at every god and made subtle changes to stay true to the god, whether it's a visual balance pass, an overall fresh coat of paint, or minor proportional changes so Chuck doesn't have a dad bod anymore. No matter how big or small, we've been looking into everything and working hard to really push the boundaries of what Smite 2 can be. Every aspect of the presentation is being considered to create an improved experience. Smite 2 is also strictly better technically than Smite in pretty much every way imaginable. Our new Rally Here backend supports millions of concurrent users. Smite 1 players know that our old monolithic matchmaking core had a tendency of dying long before we had that many players. Smite 2 will have an all-new custom matchmaking system, which is specifically designed to tackle the unique challenges of matchmaking for a MOBA. And Ranked will be reimagined with a brand new system that aims to bring the competition to more players than ever, while creating a true uncapped battle for the number one spot in the world. Smite 1's UI runs on Flash. Yes, that Flash, which has long kept us from creating a modern UI with polish and performance that's finally possible in Smite 2. And Smite 2 is a next-gen native title, taking full advantage of modern hardware. Smite 2 will support full crossplay across PC, Steam Deck, Xbox Series X and S, and PlayStation 5. Smite 2 is a game where fighting feels strictly better than ever, so you can feel more like a god with additional impact on every hit. Weapon movements leave trails, making attacks more visible. Upper and lower body animations are more in sync positioning your character within the action. Specific animations and effects have been retuned to add more impact than before. CC status and immunity are now clearly communicated on nameplates, so it's easier to read the flow of combat. And work has been done on the UI and user experience to make sure you truly feel when you're hitting your enemies and being hit. And perhaps most importantly, it's a game with strictly better tactical and strategic depth than Smite 1. We've completely overhauled the idea of items and relics in Smite 2 to open the doors for more creativity, expression, and experimentation in every game you play. First up, relics are gone, at least as you know them. Now every god has two buttons by default, purification beads to immune crowd control, and a warding slot used specifically for your choice of vision control options. What about the other former relic options and items? Well, now your entire six slot item inventory can potentially have an activated effect, triggered by a button press. If you want blink, buy a blinking amulet. And don't worry, if you don't want to think about using any extra buttons in combat, you can still build items that are focused on stats and passives instead. The choice is yours in this new system. The item store is now easier to navigate with an entirely new way to build items. Want to cool it down item and don't want to scour 30 different trees? Don't want to have to decide now what finished item you'll need in five minutes? Don't worry, just build a bow and every single item with attack speed can be built out of that bow. And you'll have more creative builds than ever before. Gods are no longer just magical or physical. Each god will now have two different sources of power, strength and intelligence. Different abilities within each god's kit will scale differently, and all gods will be able to build all items. Face Punch Ymir with crit is back. Hunters that used to do it all like Kernanos now will need to build Int in order to increase damage on certain abilities, like his Polymorph. And new hybrid utility options let Chalk build Int to buff his healing. And there's even more new in Smite 2 to reward you for tactically and creatively playing the Conquest map. Ambush your enemies from new stealth zones, and make clutch rotations through portals connecting outer lanes. Battle against the Fire Giant, fully equipped with new abilities and new tactical approaches. Like the back door, you can open to sneak in for a steal. Earn game-changing buffs as you defeat the Gold Fury, culminating in the Ancient Fury, a new game-ending objective. Gain every advantage through mastering new lane and jungle mechanics. New minion formations and siege minions will make laning more rewarding, while an evolving jungle introduces new strategy to jungling. And there's an all-new way to intentionally interact with the map through a button press. Use this to fight over the Warhorn, which strengthens your minions, or to pick up a buff. That's right, there are no more accidental buff pickups in Smite 2. As we've said before, Smite 2 is a true sequel to Smite and a new standalone game. So let's address the question on everyone's mind. Existing content from Smite 1 will not directly transfer to Smite 2, but don't worry, just because your content doesn't directly transfer doesn't mean we're not rewarding our loyal players in Smite 2 for their time, money, and accomplishments. First, let's talk about why we are not directly transferring content. Smite 2 is a multi-generational leap from Smite 1, moving from Unreal 3 to Unreal 5. That means we have to completely rework or recreate every piece of content for it to function in Smite 2. Currently, because we want to make sure all the content that goes into Smite 2 is strictly better, it takes about two months of work 
to get one skin from Smite to Smite 2. And that's if we just poured it with effects, without making other meaningful improvements. As of today, there are about 1,600 skins in Smite, excluding mastery skins. To just pour every skin to Smite 2, it would take about 246 person years of work. And we couldn't do that and make Smite 2 as amazing as we knew it could be if we started fresh. When we started this project, we made this hard call. We believed that our players wanted a better version of Smite more than anything else. So what will you get in Smite 2? Introducing Legacy Gems and Divine Legacy, two systems designed to make sure you get rewarded for your time, money, and achievements. Whether you grinded out daily logins or went hard on your gem sales, your Legacy Gems will be waiting for you in Smite 2. You'll receive Legacy Gems in Smite 2 equal to every single gem you've ever spent in Smite 1, free or purchased. Your Legacy Gems can be used to pay for 50% of most in-game purchases in Smite 2. So things like events, skins, battle passes, and Smite 2 will all be half off until you spend all of your Legacy Gems. And if you purchase any Smite 2 Founders Packs, we'll give you double your Legacy Gems, giving you the equivalent purchasing power to the gems you already spent in Smite 1. Stay tuned for more info on Smite 2's Founders Packs as we get closer to release. And Year 11 of Smite 1 comes with an all new feature, Divine Legacy, going live in the first update of Year 11. Through the Divine Legacy, you'll be rewarded for your progress for each year of Smite's history. We've tracked the gods you've mastered, the ranked matches you've lost, the skins you've unlocked, and the match hours you've played. You earn points for your progress in each year, and your points are tallied together to give you rewards. You'll get a number of Smite 2 badges to show off some of your amazing Smite 1 achievements, your rare skins, and your exact mastery level and star count on each god. Plus, you'll unlock up to 11 skins in Smite 2 free! One for each year of Smite! Even if you don't plan to move to Smite 2, the Divine Legacy has some amazing rewards for you. You'll get to choose any unlimited tier 4 and any unlimited tier 5 to unlock absolutely free in Smite 1. And if you've started Smite more recently, don't worry. You can still make progress on your Divine Legacy throughout Year 11 and eventually unlock all the rewards. There's something else brand new coming to Smite in Year 11, cross-gen skins. With Smite 2 approaching, we built a whole new skin production pipeline to make content that you'll get both in Smite 1 and in Smite 2. You can unlock two cross-gen skins today with the Smite Legacy Pass DLC, available now in Smite. This pack includes the new cross-gen Untamed Bologna skin, the new cross-gen Batty Bat Jingwei skin, a boost to Divine Legacy progress in Year 11, and more. There's not just one or two cross-gen skins this year. Every new Gem Purchasable skin released in Smite in Year 11 will be a cross-gen skin, unlocked for you in Smite 2 as soon as that god is available to play. And as an added benefit, you'll get Legacy Gems in Smite 2 for every gem you spend on these cross-gen skins or any Smite 1 content. We're so excited for the cross-gen content that we're kicking off Year 11 with two all-new events built around the concept. First, Battle Passes are now cross-gen passes. Second, the Immortal Honor event, where we'll reveal two new gods transitioning to Smite 2 every month. And it's important to make clear once again, Smite 2 is a true sequel. Smite 1 and all of your Smite 1 content will remain live and available for you to play even after Smite 2 releases. I know we threw a lot of information at you today about Smite 2 and the Divine Legacy process. We've put together a rundown at smite2.com slash FAQ. We'll also continue to update you nonstop as more information about Smite 2 comes out. So follow at Smite Game on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter. I mean, I mean X, you know what I mean. We are committed to Smite 2 for years to come. And as a competitive game, that commitment starts with esports. 2024 will be a transition year for the esports scene as the Titan Forge esports ecosystem moves from Smite to Smite 2 and evolves to answer a few of the community's most frequently heard concerns. More lands where you can join together in the audience and cheer on your favorite teams. A return of region-based rivalries with their unique metas. No more requirements for pros to live in Atlanta, allowing anyone to compete regardless of where they are from. An esports scene that is more open to anyone with the skill to win. And more freedom for players to sign sponsorship deals with whomever they want to. Introducing the Smite 2 Founders Series. A series of land majors that will be built the foundation of Smite 2 esports scene. Starting during Smite 2's alpha, 
teams will be able to form freely under a banner of their choice and play in online qualifiers. The best teams will earn their spots to play live at a Smite 2 LAN Major. These majors will be held in front of a live audience around the world. We can confirm today that in year one of Smite 2 Esports, there will be at least one major in the United States, and for the first time since 2017, competitive Smite will be played in front of a crowd at a major in Europe or the UK. Be sure to follow the Smite Pro X account to learn more about Smite 2 Founder Series and how you can take part. When we started development on Smite 2, we wanted to make the first great MOBA since Smite. We think we're on the right track, but we're not done yet. There's a lot of work still left to be done. We're going to need your help to make Smite 2 as amazing as it can be, because we believe the best games are developed alongside their communities. We've already begun early testing with SPL pros, Olympians, and some of your favorite content creators. Their feedback has been shaping the direction of Smite 2 for months. We expect you'll be able to get your hands on Smite 2 this spring in early alpha testing. Go to smite2.com right now to register for an alpha code. Keep in mind, this will be a true alpha. The game will still be rough around the edges and even in the middle, but we want you in the game to get your feedback as soon as we can so that we're sure we're making the Smite 2 that you all want to play. For a few of you here in attendance at Esports Stadium Arlington, you'll get a special chance to play a private test of Smite 2 this weekend. There's so much more we can't wait to tell you about Smite 2. We didn't even have time to mention that voice packs in Smite 2 are now just unlocked automatically with each god. At 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time, on Sunday, January 14th, immediately following the Smite Year 11 show match, we'll be live on stage here at Esports Stadium Arlington and streaming everywhere online for our very first Smite 2 Dev Insight Show. We'll talk more about our goals for Smite 2, showcase some development footage, and try to give a lot more detail about our vision for Smite 2. And from now until Alpha, we're going to be diving deep on a new feature every week. We'll cover some things we've touched on here today and some we just didn't have time to get to, like our improved audio system and how Conquest roles are changing. If you want to be sure to get all the latest news, wishlist Smite 2 on Steam, Xbox, PlayStation, and Epic Games Store today, and follow at Smite Game everywhere. To all those watching in Arlington or at home, thank you for making the Smite community strong. We can't wait to take this first step into the next chapter of Smite with all of you. And with that, it's time for the Smite World Championship.